we read from the day, the book of Lamentations is filled with tears and sorrow. One preacher referred to it as a paean of pain, a poem of pity, a proverb of pathos, a hymn of heartbreak, a psalm of sadness, a symphony of sorrow or a story of sifting, a tale of tears, a dirge of desolation, uh, a tragedy of travail, an account of agony, and somebody else said it was a book of boohoos. Amen. It's a whole lot of pain and tears in the book of Lamentation. In fact, some call it the wailing wall of the Bible. Now, there's no Memphis blues singer that has ever sung a sadder song than what's contained in the book of Lamentations. And these five chapters are a series of dirges or funeral hymns in which the writer describes and laments over the desolation of Judah and the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 B.C. In other words, lamentation is the writer's response to Judah's chastening by the hand of God. Now, I don't know anyone who ever enjoyed getting a whooping. Let me get proper. Those of you who may not know what that is, a whipping. Uh-huh. See, when I came up, they said it was a whooping. And I think that's what we need in America today is some more parents who believe in whooping. Am I in the right house? I think some of our children would straighten up their act if parents believed in whooping. And I know that there are those who tell you you can't whoop your kids anymore because it's child abuse. Well, I got abused as a child. <laughs> Y'all looking at me strange in here. Is there anybody else who got abused as a child? I got some whoopings. Amen, and, 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 and I got a, a, a variation of whoopings. Uh, there was no such thing when I came up as time out. Time out was what you called in a game when you wanted a brief moment of respite. You were tired, right? And you said, time out. Amen, it, it had nothing to do with discipline. And now we can have kids acting like they've just plumb lost their ever-loving mind. And instead of getting a good stiff backhand or a boot in the behind, they get sent to time out. Uh, now, I don't want to mess with your home or what's happening in your house, but it's time out for time out. <laughs> Amen. And we ought to go on back to good old-fashioned butt whoopings. Amen. Did you know that there is a button in a child's behind that goes straight to their brain? Amen. I mean, it goes straight. You can tell them three times and they'll act like they're deaf, but all you got to do is pop them one good time and all of a sudden you got their attention. Am I in the right house? And God had to get the attention of his people and so he was giving them a good old fashioned extension cord butt whooping. Anybody ever been introduced to the extension cord? Or maybe he was giving them a good old fashioned switch whooping. These young folk don't know what I'm talking about. They ain't never been introduced to the switch. Amen. But those, how many of you ever were introduced to Mr. or Mrs. Switch? Amen. Young folk think Switch is a, is a singing group. But a Switch was something that Grandma sent you out to pull off the tree to come in and give you a whooping wit. And don't come in with one that was too small or she would go get half the tree. Amen. And, and the Lord was giving his people a whooping. 
and, and, and I don't know of too many of us that ever enjoyed getting a whooping. Whether it was a whooping from your parents or a spiritual chastening from God, uh, you did not enjoy getting a whipping. In fact, Scripture tells us in, in Proverbs 3 and 11, my son, despise not the whippings of the Lord. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction, for whom the Lord loved, he chastened even as a father, the son in whom he delight. Don't you know that you show your love to your children when you whoop them? Y'all, I just lost half of y'all in here. Hey Amen. Y'all ought to love your kids. Hey Amen. Love them every day. Show them some love. Hey Amen. When they won't make up the bed and clean up that nasty room, show them some love. When they decide to get flip and come out their mouth talking like they ain't got no sense, like you one of their girls or one of their boys, you ought to show them some love. I wish I had somebody in the house here. When they decide that they're running the house and they can raise their voice at you and come in when they feel like it and do what they want to do, look at somebody and say, just show them some love. See, when I understand and realize uh, that the stripes from a whipping are from our own good, it makes me feel a little better. And, 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 and don't you know, that's what our parents always told us, that it was for our own good, right? They would say, son, this is going to hurt me. What? More than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> Amen. Yet I think it's safe to say that we didn't enjoy the pain and bruises that the whipping cause. Well, that's what's taking place in our text. Judah and its capital of Jerusalem had suffered a spanking under the hand of God and had fallen to the Babylonian army under Nebuchadnezzar. The city and those that were left alive were in a crisis and the siege had taken its toll on the people and the survivors were desperate for food, for their fortunes, and for their futures. And they looked around, but there was no help coming from their allies. As a matter of fact, God had caused their former allies to turn against them in their hour of need. The kingdom and the city was once a queen among the nations, but it was now like a hopeless widow. And the thing that hurts the writer of Lamentations the most is the realization that this chastening could have been avoided and that it was their own fault. How many can at least admit that when you got a whooping, it was your own fault? Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here now. Hey, amen. I, I don't know if your children are like my children, but my children sometimes have the nerve to get mad at me when they do something to deserve discipline and then get disciplined, then they got an attitude with me like I did something wrong. Am I in the right house? Don't we do that with God? Disobey him, get ourselves messed up, get ourselves in a situation we ought not be in, then get an attitude with God. Lord, how could you let me wind up in this situation when you're the one who got yourself in that situation in the first place? See, in Deuteronomy 11, God offered Israel a choice. He said, I can either give you a life of productivity and enjoyment that would be made possible by your obedience to me, or you can have a life of difficulty and opposition made necessary by your disobedience to me. And unfortunately, over and over again, they chose the latter rather than the former. And as a result of Judah's actions, they've lost the peace, the happiness, and the hope that they once enjoyed. Well, some of you may be feeling that way today, that you've lost your peace, you've lost your happiness, you've lost your hope. But the good news is that within our text this morning, there are words of comfort to God's people when we are in trouble and distressed. And this is good news because somebody needs to know this morning that yes, we will face tragedy in our lives, but in the midst of our affliction shines a ray of hope. So when we examine our text, we need to point out that while the author of our text is not revealed, 
it is believed that this is the weeping prophet known as Jeremiah. It says.